dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Rod Cameron in Roundup in Madison Square, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week the brightest names from motion pictures join us for your entertainment. Our star is Rod Cameron, and the title of our story, Roundup in Madison Square. Rod, as he does on the screen, portrays a dashing cowboy, the feature of the annual Madison Square Rodeo. His rodeo exploits, however, are second to his role of Romeo, when he meets and conquers the fair heart of Westchester's most sought-after Deb. Act one of Roundup in Madison Square in a moment, but first, this message from Wendell Niles. The men of the United States Army and the United States Air Force have a job to do for themselves and for you. That job is preserving the peace. The mission these young men have before them is accomplishing the security of our country and securing the peace of the world. There will be great satisfaction for them and for you when it can be said that they have done that job, when the time-honored words, mission accomplished, can be spoken at last. Under all circumstances, we must give them the support they deserve. Now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's act one of Roundup in Madison Square, starring Rod Cameron as Jeff Holt. Manhattan, that great teeming metropolis of skyscrapers and subways, of pitchmen in the Bronx and shops on Park Avenue. Manhattan, big enough to include Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, yes, and even Texas. Big enough to hold them all at the annual Roundup in Madison Square. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting that rider supreme from the range of old Wyoming. The champion roper and bronc buster of the world, Jeff Holt, riding in exhibition his renowned partner, his famous horse, Sagmore. In a special box at Ring Center, Sylvia Manners, lovely young socialite, and her party of Westchester sophisticates. Witness this kaleidoscope of cowboys and critters. Wealthy Miss Manders, who has purchased a cattle ranch, but who has never been closer to it than the Madison Square Rodeo, is entranced by the spectacle before her. But a chap sitting next to her seems rather bored by it all. Oh, Sylvia, what possible kick do you get out of watching this bunch of roughnecks parade around like something out of a 1920 movie? Oh, Reggie, how you talk. I think it's thrilling. After all, it's the Old West, isn't it? Sure, it's the Old West. So old that it's got mildew on it. Uh, Bunch of fake he-men all dressed up in leather panty waists and purple silk shirts. That guy down there looks like a valentine going someplace to be delivered. He does not, Reggie. Mm, he's cute. And would you look at him ride? It's beautiful. Uh, do you know what, Reggie? I've got an idea, a wonderful idea. Uh oh here we go again. What is it? Let's invite, uh, uh, what's his name? What's whose name? The rider down there. Oh, oh yes, here, here it is on the program. Jeff Holt. You invite him for what? To take his horse out of your place to plow up the garden? Well, of course not, silly. Let's invite him out tonight after the show. <laughs> it might be fun having a cowboy in our party. You're not serious, are you? I most certainly am. Give me a pencil and I'll send a note to his dressing room. What do you mean, dressing room? Those guys don't dress. They were born that way. A pencil, Reggie. Oh, here. Thank you. What makes you think he'll accept your invitation? <laughs> he'll come. But you don't know these strong, silent men of the West. 
You don't think so? Oh, Jimmy. Yes, Miss Manners. See that this note's delivered to Jeff Holt's dressing room, will you please? Yes, Miss Manners. And wait with the car and pick him up. He's coming out to the house. You hope. And while this plot was brewing up in the special boxes, Jeff Holt and his horse Sagmore finished their exhibition, rode through the exit to the fanfare of the band and the sweeping applause of the crowds. After dismounting and giving a couple of lumps of sugar to his horse, Jeff went to his dressing room to join his trainer and pal of the West, Curly Peabody. Hey, Curly, wake up. Hey, what's it? Oh, 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 it's you. Some of these days you're going to go to sleep and wake up and find yourself dead. By jings, I want to sleep, Jeff. I was just sitting here speculating. Well, you sure do make a lot of noise when you speculate. Oh, uh, Jeff. What? Somebody knocked on the door and left you this here Billy Do. Billy Do? Sure. I can tell it's a Billy Do. On account of it, it uh, smells like violets. Well, open it up and read it. I did open it up, Jeff, but I can't read it. Why not? Well, because uh, <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> here, let's see it. Sure. Uh, Mr. Jeff Holt. Hmm. Well, well, what's it say, Jeff? Will you give me the honor of being my guest tonight at Westchester Manors? Please say you will. I have arranged for someone to call for you. I'm counting on you. Sincerely yours, Sylvia Manners. Great jumping prairie dogs. That there sounds like it was writ by a gal. That's right, Curly. You hit the nail right smack on the head. Put these guns away, will you? Yeah, sure, Jeff. But uh, what you can do about it? You ain't aiming to just plumb ignore it, are you? I ain't aiming to do nothing else. Oh, now, Jeff, you can't do that away. A putty girl sends you a billy do a love and true affection. Why, it'd be right down plumb impolite. Aren't you forgetting, Curly? We're writers, not society dudes. Yeah, but Jeff, this is a plumb high social doing. Maybe they'll be having some of them cocktails. And right now I'm thustier than a coyote in the middle of the Mojave Deserts. I didn't see any mention in this invite of your name. No, but there ain't no such thing as you going someplace without me. Well, you can just cut out your blabbering now, Curly, because we ain't going to no highfalutin shindig. And that's final. Ah, crickets, cunts. See who that is, will you? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Come in. Well, how do you do, sir? I'm looking for Mr. Jeff Holt. You don't mean you're looking for him. You mean you're looking at him. Are you Mr. Holt? He is. I'm Jeff Holt. What can I do for you? I presume you've received Miss Sylvia Manor's note, Mr. Holt. I have a car here to pick you up. Well, I'm right sorry, but you see, uh, I'm afraid we can't make it. If you'll just tell Miss Manners that we're much obliged... Now, to... Jeff Holt, you know that ain't no ways to treat a lady. Where is she bringing up? I can assure you, Mr. Holt, that Miss Manners will be terribly disappointed. Well, I'm sorry. Particularly but... since she just purchased a ranch out your way. What ranch? The Lazy Jay. Lazy Jay? Why, that's my outfit. <laughs> I got a sneaking hunch I'm going to get my thirst quenched. Yes, Mr. Holt. Miss Manners is going to be very disappointed if she doesn't get to meet her foreman. Well, in that case, I reckon we better go along with you. Awfully nice of you to join us, Jeff. Generous of you to ask us, ma'am. I understand from Jimmy you had to be coerced into coming with <laughs> I was really amazed when I saw your name on the program as being from the Lazy J. Well, I knew the place had changed hands, but I had no idea my new boss would be a woman, ma'am. Oh? Are you pleased or disappointed? Well, I reckon I, uh, I don't know yet. At least you're very honest. Well, we will want to get together a lot while you're in New York. Will we? I want to discuss things with you. Oh, you do? What things? For well, the ranch, of course. I've suddenly decided Sylvia. I'm very interested Sylvia, in that ranch. Oh, I, I want you to meet someone. Uh, may I present Mr. Reginald Witherspoon, Mr. Jeff Holt? Well, bust my britches if and I ain't right. Pleased to meet you, stranger. How are y'all? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, and uh, here's Curly. Uh, this is Mr. Peabody, Mr. Witherspoon. Huh? Glad to meet you. Mm -hmm. And now that the introductions are over, would you gentlemen care for a cocktail? Oh, well, ma'am, I ain't a drinking. Uh, say, lead me to it. Curly. If you gentlemen will forgive me for just a moment, I'll get you something. 
Make yourselves comfortable. You'll find cigarettes there on the table. I suppose you'd much prefer to roll your own, wouldn't you, Mr. Holt? No, I wouldn't mind a tailor-made. I've been smoking them ever since I left home. Yeah, me too. Ain't civilization wonderful? I imagine you do find it quite a treat to visit a place like this. I don't suppose you've ever seen a swimming pool like that one. Italian tile. Is that so? I thought it was Serbian. Hmm. Well, we don't have much like this out our way, Mr. Weatherspoon. In fact, the only swimming we have time for is on Saturday night. And the boys in the bunkhouse be plumb ornery about taking the bath as big as that one, Mr. Whistlegoon. It's Witherspoon, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Whistlegoon. Yes, sir. I'll bet you'll have quite a tale to tell the folks when you get out there. All about the skyscrapers. By the way, how do you find the skyscrapers, Mr. Holt? Oh, we just look around and there they are. <laughs> I don't mean how do you find them. I, I mean, what do you think of them? Well, they're all right, I reckon. Them buildings would sure look funny setting out with the water hole, wouldn't they? Reckon they'd give the cows a fit of the bloat. Yes, I suppose so. Uh, tell us something about the great and glorious West, Mr. Holt. I'll bet you boys cut quite a figure out there. Yeah, some. Well, this must be quite a spree for you, coming east, getting away from herding cows and sheep. What did you say? A sheep. Sheep. Yes, you fellows herd sheep, don't you? <laughs> you know, Curly, this fellow's so interested in us and how we live, a person can't get a word in edgewise. What do you mean? Well, this uh, swimming pool of yours, that's mighty dumb found into a couple of lonely cowpokes. Yeah, it sure is, Jeff. Makes your eyes pop plumb out of your head. Now, if you was to just show me what kind of tile that is on the bottom. Why, certainly. Come over here to the edge. You see, Curly, uh... Curly here has never seen a pool like this. That's right, and I've always wanted to see what uh, somebody would look like swimming in it. Well, here's your chance, Curly. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Push me in. We had to give Mr. Witherspoon a bath, miss. Uh, you see, it's Saturday night. I failed to see a joke in shoving a poorly dressed man into that pool. Oh, uh, ma'am, maybe it'll cure him of making fun of people. You are roughnecks, aren't you? Maybe so. Come on, Curly. I think we'd better be moseying. <laughs> we pause briefly from our story, Round Up in Madison Square, starring Rod Cameron, to bring you an important message from our government. Now a question. Are you one of the best... As United States Air Force Aviation Cadet, you will be one of the best because only the best can be aviation cadets. If you are between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half, with two years of college or the ability to pass an equivalent examination, and if you are physically fit, you have the basic qualifications for United States Air Force Aviation Cadet training. After you've been accepted, you'll receive a year's special training. Once you have completed the course successfully, the silver wings of an Air Force pilot will be yours, together with a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. If you are an outstanding graduate, you will receive a regular commission in the Air Force immediately. All other graduates have a good opportunity to qualify for one of the hundreds of regular commissions available each year while on active duty. So don't wait. Visit your nearest Air Force base or U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station at once. Only the best can be aviation cadets. The curtain rises on Act Two of Round Up in Madison Square, starring Rod Cameron as Jeff Holt. Well, a week has passed since they slapped a saddle on the last critter out of the chute at Madison Square. Back at Lazy J Ranch in Wyoming, Jeff and Curly return to the routine of tending cattle. Of a late afternoon one day, Curly finds Jeff riding line, repairing the fence. And Curly's a no little surprised as he rides up. Oh, 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 it's Curly. Well, well, here you are. Here I am. So what? Well, what are you doing, Jeff? Patching up this fence? Needs it, don't it? Yeah, hey, needs it, all right. Well? But you got a lot of hands you get ordered to fix this fence. Why are you riding off like this, Jeff? You worried? Worried? About what? That maybe Miss Sylvia Manor's going to take such a dislike to you for dunking her friend Whipplegoon into the water. She's going to fire you. Now listen to me. I don't care what Miss Sylvia Manor's does. Is that clear to you? Yeah, clear as a picture. Jeff, 
That Billy do got you. You're plumb loco on the gal. You better get going before I throw this hammer at you. Hey, I'm going. Come on. Well, maybe Jeff was loco over Sylvia Manners. Or maybe Curly had a tall imagination. At any rate, one morning over at the Branding Corral, while Jeff was supervising activities, Curly came streaking in on his paint, and he had the darndest look in his eye. Oh, I mean Curly, not the paint. Oh, oh, hold up there, you blasted jackrabbit. Oh, oh. Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> What's all the rush, Curly? Somebody tie a tin can in your tail? No, but I just rid in from North Fork. Look what I brung you. It's a... Uh... Oh, shucks, here it is. Hmm, telegram. Wonder who from. Well, ain't no way to find out, except to open it and see. Reckon you're right, Curly. Pete. Yeah, boss? You better knock off. It's about noontime. You can catch those yearlings this afternoon. Okay, boss. Ain't you going to read the, the, well, why don't you read it, Jeff? I'm aiming to. Well, I'll be hog-tied. What's the matter, boss? <laughs> well, what do you know about that? Well, suffering sun-fishing sidewinders, Jeff. What's in that there telegram before I bust a hamstring? We're going to have visitors, Curly. So? Yeah, our new owner's coming out here, accompanied by quite a retinue. A couple of secretaries and Mr. Reginald Witherspoon. Well, I'll be it. I'll be... For gosh sakes. Curly? Yeah, Jeff? Look, round up the boys. Have them put the two cars and the station wagon in the North 40 barn. Cover them up with tarps. Uh, disconnect the refrigerator and put it in the cellar. Great jumping horny toes, Jeff. You're going clean off in your mind. Tell Pete to take all the fuses out of the switch box and dig up the old kerosene lamps. Holy! Jeff's going loco. Maybe I have, but do as I say. Tell the boys to buckle on their guns. Oh, yeah, and ditch the radio. This is the Old West, Curly. We're going to have visitors. We're going to make them welcome. Oh, here you are. This way, Holt. Hello, Mr. Witherspoon. Take care of this baggage, will you, Holt? Why, sure. Where's Miss Manners? She'll be coming with the others. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon, uh, no hard feelings about what happened in New York. Oh, I should say not, and entirely forgotten. You're probably wondering why I've come along. That's your business, Mr. Witherspoon. And yours, too. I often advise Miss Manners about her affairs. Since she's so interested in this ranch now, I don't want to see her taken. Oh, you don't? No. So I'll share in the supervision. That's your privilege. Oh, here's Sylvia now. Hello, Jeff. Miss Manners? How are you? Just dandy. Well, are the others coming? They're staying in town tonight. Well, then I guess we can move along. Buckboard's over this way. Buckboard, did you say? You're out west now, Mr. Witherspoon. Oh, it's all right. I, I plan to rough it. Can't have all the conveniences of civilization, you know. That's right. And now if you'll help Miss Sylvia into the buckboard, I'll pitch your baggage in the back. The ranch ain't far from here, only about uh, 20 miles. 20 miles? From here? That's right. Ain't more than a stone's throw. In fact, ain't much further than you can throw a bull by the tail. You all set, Miss Manners? Wonderful, Jeff. Hang on, Mr. Witherspoon. On account of here we go. Get up, boys. Say, Jeff, couldn't you manage to drive a little slower? I mean to say, not for my sake, but for Sylvia's. Hmm? Oh, no, no, don't bother about me, Jeff. I love it. It's wonderful. I, I'd like it better if you could go even faster. No sooner said than done. Get up, boys. <sighs> oh, looks like we might be getting a summer shower. Sure could use it. Yep, there she comes. Oh. Sure would be great for pasture lamb. Here, Miss Sylvia, you can put this slicker over your head and keep dry. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Haven't you got another raincoat, Jeff? I, I mean to say I'm very susceptible to colds. Sorry, Mr. Witherspoon, but that's the only one I've got. Rain won't last long, not more than a couple hours. Get up, boy. Sounds like Mr. Whistlegoon done cotched himself the papers, Pete. Sure does, Curly. What do you think we ought to do for him? <laughs> well, for goodness sakes, do something. I'll catch the boat, you. Yep. Breaking your will, all right. This is sure pneumonia country out this way. Pete, I wonder how some of that horse liniment would go if an, uh, we was to rub it on his chest. Yeah. Why, sure. And maybe we could soak his feet in some of that turpentine and mustard and blue vitriol. <laughs> Like we do for the horses when they get the stumble. Well, is it the doctor of the neighborhood someplace? 
I mean, see, you certainly must have a doctor here about some bus at you. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Whistlegoon, the nearest doc's about 40 miles from here, over to Centerville. Ooh. And he's a veteran, veteran, he's a horse doctor. Well, then, please ask Miss Manners or Mr. Holt to come here. Perhaps they could suggest something. I'm afraid we can't do that away, Mr. Rasselboom. On account of Jeff and Miss Manners out about. But don't you worry. Me and Curly will fix you up. Have you fit in a yearling calf and Timothy? Won't we, Curly? You bet we will. Jeff. Who is it? Oh, it's me. What are you doing out here? Uh, I've been trying to see you, Jeff. I, I want to talk to you. I wanted to tell you I was wrong. The way I talked to you that night in New York. That's all right, ma'am. Well, can't you just say, forgiven? Forgiven. But do you mean it? I usually mean what I say. <laughs> well, it's such a beautiful night. The moon, the stars. Let's ride on the trail. You're the boss, ma'am. You love it out here, don't you, Jeff? Yes, ma'am. I reckon I do. There's a lot out here to love. Look yonder, rolling purple hills. And this stretch of prairie land is still clean and fresh, like the air and the lowing of the cattle. I guess when a man's born to it, he, he just can't get it out of his blood. Yeah, I reckon I do love it out here. Do you think you could ever learn to love something or somebody else enough to give up this country? I couldn't love anybody or anything if they didn't love this country the way I do. Jeff, tell me something. Sure, what is it? We didn't see much of each other in New York, and it all ended so stupidly, but... Oh, Jeff, why do you suppose I came out here with Reggie? Well, you said in your telegram Don't that... bother the telegram. Can't you think of the real reason? Well, I... Oh, Jeff Holt, you're such an idiot. Haven't you ever been in love? Well, no, ma'am. Well, I mean... What do you mean, Jeff? Well, I mean, we better be riding back to the ranch. It's about dinner time, and I'll bet you're hungry. Take care of the horses. Dinner's set on the table for you. Ah, thanks, Pete. You let me help you, Sylvia. Oh. <sighs> now that I begin to think about it, I am hungry. In fact, I'm practically starved. That's what the air out this way does for you. Evening, Jeff. Miss Manners. Well, you can set yourselves right down. Cookie's just dishing it up. If you'd like to brush up a bit, there's plenty of time, Sylvia. Mrs. Ames is kind of slow dishing up. <laughs> All right, thanks. I will. Where's Mr. Witherspoon, Curly? Oh, yes. Where is Reggie? I haven't seen him all afternoon. You mean Mr. Whistlegoon? Oh, him. Yeah, have you called him for supper? Well, I don't reckon he'll be wanting none, Jeff. In fact, he ain't, uh, he ain't, uh, he's gone that away. Gone that away? Yes, ma'am, Miss Manners. You see, uh, me and Pete fixed up his cold. What are you talking about? Well, Mr. Whistlegoon cotched a cold, Jeff, and me and Pete figured to cure him. So we soaked his feet in mustard and tuppen time. And the last time we saw him, he was heading for the railroad station. But Curly. Now, me and Pete lit out and tried to catch him. But he was jumping fences and taking them gullies like he was a low code jackrabbit. Whistle goon sure could run. We're going to leave the ending of this story a secret. Except to say that if you ever travel west and happen to pass the Lazy J, stop in and pay the folks there a visit. You'll find Jeff Holt, the former rodeo champ, and Mrs. Holt, who will probably look adoringly in the direction of her tall husband. Yes, neighbors, that's what a billy do will get you. A billy do delivered at the Roundup in Madison Square. Curtain falls in the final act of Roundup in Madison Square. Our star, Rod Cameron, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. There is no doubt of any kind that the armed services of the United States have always been and are today the healthiest organizations of their kind in the entire world. The U.S. Army Medical Department is charged with the responsibility of keeping the United States Army and Air Force the healthiest in the world. 
But now, with the rapid expansion of the services, a serious shortage of expert, professional manpower has developed. You see, the medical department is not physicians and dentists alone. There is also the Medical Service Corps. In this group are pharmacists, biochemists, clinical psychologists, social case workers, and others of the medical allied sciences. The U.S. Army needs men who qualify in these fields. The Army's career guidance plan encourages professional growth as the works of the medical department ever widens the opportunities for increased knowledge and scientific research. For complete details, write to the Surgeon General, U.S. Army, Washington, 25, D.C. And now once again, at the microphone, our star, Rod Cameron, and our producer. Rod, that was a rather warm treatment. Pete and Curly used on Reggie to cure his cold. <laughs> you mean soaking his feet in terps, mustard, and blue vitriol? Yes. <laughs> a CP, that fiery combination acts the same as if he'd stepped down inside a volcano and come out rocket-powered. Probably burned his feet off clear up to his ears. <laughs> well, now that we've gotten rid of Reggie through the pyrotechnics of our heroes, what's your hobby? Carving. What? Wood carving. Oh. Here, take a look at this scarf slide. Oh, very fine. Where'd you get the idea for this one? Oh, just sort of developed as I went along. I've made about 300 of them. 300? How long does it take to make one? Mm, two or three days. I'm working on a chess set now that will have over 60 different kinds of hardwood in it. That's a real project. Well, what an unusual hobby for an ex-pro hockey player, not to mention your football and basketball career. How long does it take to carve a set of chessmen? Well, let's see. There are 32 men to a set, and it takes me, oh, about 18 hours to a figure. That'd be... Um, if I worked eight hours a day at it, it'd take me about three months. Now, if we'd put the actual worth at the rate of motion picture salary... Oh, I don't figure my spare time like that. I get my pleasure out of making and finishing these things. Which reminds me, have you finished your picture stampede yet? Oh, yes. I made it at United Artists, and it should be pretty well distributed by now. I saw you in the plunderers, and very good, Rod. So I'll be sure to catch stampede. Who else is in it? Well, Gail Storm and Johnny Mac Brown, mostly. What's your next release here? Next week, Rod, and ladies and gentlemen, Ruth Huzzy makes a welcome return to our microphone in a romantic play titled Design for Loving. This is the story of a working girl whose mental image of the perfect man becomes blurred through the scent of yellow roses which he sends each week to another woman. Sounds like a good deal. I'll be listening and a whittling. So long, CP. <laughs> Goodbye, Rod Cameron. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen when we bring you Ruth Huzzy in Design for Loving. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Rob Cameron appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Music was under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.